there is one thing I want to highlight in this video. I want you to think about the apostles briefly after Christ uh, ascended into the heavens. They were preaching in Judea. The scribes and Pharisees, or better the religious as well as political leaders, didn't want it to happen. So they arrested them. But then they had a meeting concerning what to do with those men that were causing a disruption in the community. Those men that caused the disruption were the apostles. They preached the gospel of the kingdom. One of the leaders, which was the high priest, told the congregation, in this case, the, they told, he told the religious and political leaders the following. Years ago, there was this guy that claimed to be something and he had a big following, but eventually it collapsed. And there were more of such examples. These men, however, they are effective. Now, we don't know whether they are really from God or not. But if it be so that these people are really anointed by God, we are in big trouble when we fight them. So, the rest of the government listened to them, I mean, it's the local government over there, and only they did what the boss was, they whipped them and released them. And what happened after the apostles were released? They rejoiced that they were afflicted for Christ's sake because they weren't stealing, they weren't robbing anyone. It's not because of any wrongdoing that they were imprisoned and whipped. They were whipped and imprisoned, or rather imprisoned and whipped for the sake of Christ. And they rejoiced and they didn't look at the wounds they received on their bodies. They continued preaching the word. So were they respectful? Did they respect the wishes of the people and of the government? No. Their loyalty was Christ. And they made plain in their attitude that Christ is first with them. Yes, they do consider the community. They do consider the leaders. But Christ is Lord. Now listen to what I'm saying here. When you are anointed and you walk in the power sooner or later, People with discernment will know that you have big power behind you. Even atheists who don't want to acknowledge the spirit world will recognize there is power behind you. Now, the wizards know who Christ is and they know they are losing. They know they will, they will pay for what they are doing. So they will know that this Christ is with you. But apart from the wizards, you may have warlocks and which you will recognize that you have some big power behind you. Even though they're deceived, they may not recognize it's Christ, but well, some do, but not all. They will recognize that you're not normal. You have someone or a group of you have, you have some spiritual power behind you that enables you to do things other people wouldn't dare to do. It can be, for example, that there is this um, uh, COVID expectation in the community that you should never talk back to your parents or any older individual. So when you're younger, you have to take all the crap and all the negative dumping of older people, especially your parents. But you, you agree with Christ and you make plain, I'm not doing it. So what's going to happen? Naturally, the community would retaliate against you because you violate one of their core expectations. But, because it's you and you walk in the power, you do it and nobody dares to resist you. They may avoid you or when they see you, they walk away because they are frightened. Because anytime anyone in the community try to correct you or put you in your place, or they wanted to make an example out of you, they became an example. It backfired, and you were not even aware of it. So, those around in the community who see this happen, they see that you 
disregarded one of the core expectations of the community. They also sought the anger against you, but they also witnessed the anger backfiring on those who were angry against you, but you had no physical nor political power to vindicate you. So what happens now is that they see that there is some spiritual power backing you up. So what happens next is that those people that uh, notice this, they're going to pay attention to you. Because they want to figure out what and who it is that's backing you up and why. That does not mean that they become supporters of you, nor that they become friends with you. It just means that they realize you are significant in the community and this makes you relevant. And because you're relevant, they have to pay attention to you. Not that they agree with you, not that they are for you, but they have to pay attention because you have impact. And your impact cannot be challenged successfully. In the case of the apostles, the high priest made playing onto the government that they had to be careful what they did with the apostles because if they went out of line and they figured out later that those men were anointed uh, they didn't want to think about that but look at this carefully even though they were not certain whether those men were anointed or not they still persecuted them they whipped the apostles now you would think okay if these men are anointed we should not uh, be we should not fight against them so we should just release them apologize and move on no even if there was a potential if there was if it was a, po a possibility that the apostles were anointed they still cause harm onto them they still exercise their revenge on them for violating their core expectations so just realize that you will have folks that will pay attention to you but don't mistake this attention for approval nor for a genuine interest now let me give an example let's say that uh, you have a gang in a in a city and the gang is selling dope now they are selling dope and they're getting away with it and they even make a lot of cash by selling dope so what are the authorities going to do they will send undercover police officers to examine the gang so the gang members the main counter strangers they want to join the gang or that want to be friends with them or that who are interested in um, doing business with them. Now the common gang members may, mis may mistake this as genuine interest but the gang leaders may see through the scam and realize hold on a minute. Those are just cops that want to find out about our business so that they can arrest us later on. They're not interested in us, they're only interested in how to defeat us or how to minimize our impact. Now, as a believer, it's in a similar way. You are considered the perpetrator and the evildoer by the world because you don't align yourself with the darkness of the world. So, you will have um, sellouts and those sellouts don't have to be people that are paid in cash. They don't have to be agents directly. You have agents who are pagans sent by the shadow governments to um, observe you. But then you also have just common random people out there who are codependent on the approval of society. You also have them, people from that class that will pay attention to you they'll begin to stalk you they'll begin to watch your every move why they're not interested i'm talking about the common individual now now that's doing this 
they just want to know how to trigger you to defeat you. They want to know your vulnerabilities and weaknesses. They want to know your next move just so that they can fight you. Even though they may realize that they can't defeat you nor stop you, they want to fight you to hinder your impact around them because they don't want to change. Now, the agents that are sent by the shadow government, they are more careful. But commoners will fake wanting to be friends with you or they will fake being on the same mission as you just to get a hold on you. Because it's all about getting a hold on you to limit you. That's what it's all about. Now, what happened with the apostles? They received resistance, but they, in the face of the authorities and of the common people, they continued to do what Christ told them to do. I want you to think about this. Because many believers today are brainwashed, brainwashed by church. It's in the morning now, so forgive me if I mispronounce certain words. I'll, I'll do my best to remain awake. Many believers today, they are just as codependent on, on society as common reprobates. Many believers today would tell you, didn't Jesus tell us to shake us off our feet? So we should leave people alone. No, no, that's not what Christ said. Christ said to shake the dust off your feet, which is symbolic to remain active, to shake off the evil influence of from evildoers from you. So it's a judgment against evildoers. So it's not you leave them alone to do whatever they want to do. You remove yourself from them, even though the evildoers may experience this as a relief, it's really a judgment against them. So Christ never vindicated nor protected the negative will of evildoers. He never did. But you have believers today, they want to be approved by society, so they get along with expectations of society. And one of the expectations is that you leave evildoers alone. God never uh, said that. God said you remove yourself from them to be away from their dangerous grip. But even that you do to continue walking by faith and to be a judgment unto them. Look, the apostles understood who the Lord was and what their goal, what their purpose was on the earth, and they didn't back off for anyone. Of course, there are times you can play it smart. You pretend to get along with what the world is expecting of you, just so that you later on can um, overrule the situation in favor of Christ. And this is why I said in a video I made a while ago that those um, yeah, the Mohammedan extremists that spread the Islamic empire in the beginning, they were very smart. When they arrived in a place, they would either arrive as refugees or just traders. They wouldn't even speak much about their Mohammedan or Islamic religion. They wouldn't. For example, when they wanted to take over Mauritania, now, back then Mauritania was both Morocco and the northern part of today called Mauritania. When they arrived in Mauritania, they didn't arrive with um, the Islamic flag and with people shouting Allahu Akbar and all of that. No, they didn't. They arrived as simple traders or as quote unquote Christian refugees from Egypt that was occupied by the Mohammedan forces. So they disguised themselves and they lived amongst the people. They had children over there. The children were taught what the real purpose was. After a while, they began to participate in the economy of that community. And by participating in the economy, they became economic they became relevant and by becoming economically relevant they established a financial base for themselves and 
Once they established their financial base, they gained political influence. Now they could demand things in how things were done in the community. And little by little, they began to enforce their Mohammedan ideals on that society. And before you knew it, the people were so acclimatized to the Mohammedan influence that they weren't even aware that the Mohammedans had taken over. Then one day, when one of the people revolted, they were shot with arrows or whatever. They didn't really have guns back then, even though the uh, design of a gun was already in existence. And when, when the common people revolted, suddenly they were part of the caliphate. That's how they did it. They remained low-key until they had enough resources to enforce Islamic rule. That's how those extremist groups did it. Now, I'm not making any parallel to what's going on in Europe today, but that's how they did it in the past. And once they took over, they erased most of the previous civilization that was before them. Because they knew as long as there's evidence of the previous civilization, people will have something to look back onto and they will realize, hold on a minute, we weren't always like this. That's how they did it. And they were quite smart. They were dedicated and firm about following Muhammad. Now understand the following here. Those Mohammedans did what believers should have done. Now, I'm not talking about the massacres that followed later and all the deception uh, they conducted. The Mohammedans were more firm about enforcing Muhammad's vision than many believers were in obeying God's commands. Which I'm talking about the New Testament commands, I'm not talking about the Old Testament. I'm talking about Christ's vision for mankind. Believers ought to enact and enforce that vision on the earth everywhere in a wise way. But you have many believers today, you had them throughout the history, but many, you have many of them today, because I'm talking about today, that get along with society to get benefits from society. They don't want to face tribulation because they don't walk in the power. So when tribulation comes, they can't overcome nor overrule the tribulation. Because when you, when you walk in the power, you're not going to be aggressive. You're not going to be violent because you have the power you operate in. And because you operate in the power, you're confident in enforcing God's will on the earth because you know that when tribulation comes, you overcome it, you overrule it. But if you're not walking in the power because you're not renewed in your mind, then what's left for you is either use violence or you cope with the demands of the world. And a lot of believers, they cope with the demands of the world instead of aligning themselves with Christ, walk in the power and overcoming the world. Now the Mohammedans, they don't have Christ. So they mainly used violence and deception. Nevertheless, they were effective and what they did, it, it worked. Now believers don't have to go towards violence nor deception because we have the power at, us, at our disposal. So why aren't we walking in the power? The first the, let's say the apostles, they walked in the power. The believers that followed one or two generations afterwards, they walked in the power. It's later on that believers became kind of lazy. Especially when the Catholic system was set up, they, were, they became completely lazy because they thought, oh, we've won. The world has turned for, uh, the world has converted to Christ. Even the Roman Emperor follows Christ. It was a hoax. That's why I'm telling you to watch out for false victories. The enemy will join you to, f to fight you. The motto of the enemy is, if you can't defeat them, join them. It comes to this. When false can't shut you down, when they can't kill you, when they can't um, uh, silence you with a smear campaign, when they can't shut you down, they will join you, not because they're with you, but they will join you to have a grip on you, to 
fight you in such a way. So the way they fight you by joining you is by limiting you or hindering you. And that is what the enemy is doing. So I'm telling you, be white as a serpent, innocent as a dove, agree with Christ.